Most people in America are not familiar with Homeland Security and how police officers and FBI agents and Secret Service people have to utilize different skill sets all the time to find what's going on in America. In America, we have 1.5 million sleeper agents at least, and openly their countries can recall them in seconds. They've also been trained in things that we don't know about because we don't train our children the same way. And we need to start thinking about Two Million Minutes, which is a documentary that talks about the difference between the education of our children and the education of other world's children. You see, other nations train their children differently. Japan has a marvelous system that's totally available to anyone anywhere in Japan. And openly, when the Japanese children come here, they go and find a Japanese school to have Saturday school to catch up on their learning of Japan. Marvelously, they do a great job of it. They may not be perfect, but they get them to the basics of what they need in reading and writing, arithmetic, and whatnot. And life also has those Kumon schools, which we've sent our son to and did things for in order to get his help. And we paid for it. But in America, we have life. In America, our life depends on the reality of our future and our children's future. So if you're a bastard parent and creating a bastard child, good luck for us in America. You see, you have a responsibility as an American citizen to pick up a parenting book and read upon it. But what I'm talking about today is Homeland Security and how every year, every day, we have new people coming here that don't care about America. They care about what they can take from us. They care about what they can play at us. They take, they take great care in what they can lie to us about and openly, literally, some of us die for them. Not only in our military across the world, protecting our soil, protecting our land, protecting our water, protecting everything that is at stake and at hand. The American president and vice president have a huge job. So I get pissed off and I get marveled by the people who've got opinions on how to do that job. Now, if you've been a long time political consultant, if you've spent your years in the offices of the news reporters or in the actual president's White House in that press room, then I'm going to listen to you. But if you're just a lay person like me, I'm just going to make a few opinions that God gives me in prophecy. That if we don't get on top of Homeland Security, if we don't have people in my force like Global Operation Defense, if we don't have people like Mr. and Mrs. Smith in that wonderful villainous and fabulous movie where basically Angela Jolie and Brad Pitt got it on and openly they ended up marrying each other. Isn't that odd that they found each other at work? But that's not always great because... One of them might still be a jerk, but in truth and in life, we have opportunities. And if you've got enough money to adopt eight children, God bless you for that. But let's not get off track. What we're talking about is what we're paying for here. When you want to open our borders, what are we opening them to? Are we opening them to people who understand our God? Are we opening them to people who understand your life is yours? Are we opening them to people who get where their boundaries begin and end? Are we opening them to people who even bother to read the rules of their studentship? of what they can and cannot do here. And I think not. You see, I did bring people over from Japan several times, in short term and long term, so I know how that works. But openly what I see here today and what I see playing here today is immature children, just as I found in Japan, who are socially under our own education of children. Some of that is because we push our children to grow up too quickly, and others is because we don't push them en enough to be more mature. But openly, when we analyze ourselves as a culture versus another nation's children or another nation's adult, we can say that how a man at my age functions in Japan is usually a good 10 to 20 years younger in his social skill sets than a man like me who's been seasoned here all his life. Sometimes it's just language constructs. They came for college and therefore they learned collegiate language. It's one of the reasons that people valued me as an interpreter because I was so incredibly well read in business books that I made my president, my vice presidents, and the shareholders and stockholders sound like presidents and openly leaders of a community. And it always went well, even if I wasn't perfect in interpretation. And sometimes my vice president, who I really love, Mr. Suzuki, who is so quiet and so funny all the time and trying really hard to be joker, and he was fine as a human being in his soul. He would say, no, not quite. I mean this, and like, okay, and then i take back over and keep going. One of the hardest things I had to do was to translate for Subaru on the spot, and some fucking idiot as my president thought I could do that, which was immoral for him to do that. God bless Mr. Suzuki, who helped me translate 
that speech immediately. I wish Mr. Suzuki had just been done the interpretation, but because of his position, he couldn't under the social constructs that were binding me and him. But God bless the fact that that gracious man from Subaru was a bilingual person. He could have spoken in English in every way. But he kept looking at me like, you're ahead of me, you're behind me, hurry up. <laughs> and it's like, sorry, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm as nervous as hell and you got me in front of a 200 person tent that I didn't expect to be in front of today. And you gave us maybe two hours to prepare for you. Thanks a lot. Even though our open house was planned for months on end. Nobody told me that and I was placed on the spot. But we do those things. And we learn those things and we value those lessons. But we also value teamwork today. 